At last we come to Emergent Properties, perhaps the most intriguing property of game design. I can tell you what they are, but by their very nature, I can't tell you how to use them. Emergence is a creation of complex systems from simple interactions or rules. For example, the cells in your body, the stock market, or something a little closer to role-playing would be the result of Zimbardo's infamous Sanford Prison Experiment, where the guards became abusive with, when given power, and the prisoners took on an extreme level of conformity. With regards to games, I've heard Luke Crane provide this definition. An emergent property is a quality of a game that only comes out in play. It is not necessarily intended by the developer, and it is not explicitly spelled out in the instructions in the game. A perfect example of an emergent behavior in games is actually role-playing. The first edition of Dungeons & Dragons, released in 1974, does not instruct the player to take on an accent or an entirely different personality. The building blocks are there, that'd be the party role, the alignment, and the choices that the character faces during play, and it could often lead to the player making less optimal decisions, which was not necessarily the intention of the game, but those decisions were made for role-playing or story reasons. For most games, emergent properties can be categorized into three groups. The first is rules. This is the free parking and monopoly that we all remember. There's also combination. This is, for example, rocket jumping and first-person shooters. And the third is strategy, the infamous Zerg Rush of StarCraft. The emergent properties in role-playing games are a little harder to define, and not all of them are good. Optimizing characters can come from competition, the fear of your character's mortality, or simply because you can. Similar elements can also lead to rules mastery or rules lawyering. The low tactical advantage of having a high charisma often led to it being viewed as a dump stat. There is, of course, griefing, but RPGs are not alone in having this. We have often discussed bleed before, and that often emerges from play. A rather unique strategy came from role-playing games, and that was to do what the GM wants you to do. And that's just to name a few. Emergent properties aren't necessarily good or bad, but they can change the quality of the experience during play. This can cause the game to become more interesting or intriguing, or it can cause one or more players to have less enjoyment from the game. So how do emergent properties find their way into a game? Well, by their very nature, many aren't created directly. They tend to more often result from a lack of rules or direction. As Aristotle said, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. Emergent properties are often considered the most interesting part of game design. And while we can't necessarily control them, we should be aware of them. Thank you for watching Emergent Play. I hope this series has been enjoyable, enlightening, and above all else, thought-provoking. Feel free to stay tuned for the series epilogue, and as always, I hope that your next game is even better than your last.